Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, my name is Sylvia, and I'm gonna take you through my setup for quarter four. Now, quarter four is very important to me because NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, happens in November, and right before NaNoWriMo, we have Preptober, which is where you prep to write your novels so that you can get all of your outlining and character sketches and all of your ideas done and out of the way so when you sit down for November 1st, all you have to do is write. So I am very excited about this last quarter. I just did a flip through of my planner in here. So this is a <laughs> Traveler's Company Traveler's Notebook in black. It's my favorite one. I love the way it fills. I love the color. We also have Halloween in October. So I like that it's dark and mysterious. I have projects in here. And like I mentioned, I um, just did a flip through of this. So if you wanna watch that, you can go over to my Planner Lee channel. I will link it down below, but I have two inserts in here. The first one is meant for straight up planning in general, and then I have my writing notebook here in the back, and this is the one we're gonna focus on for this video. So Project Violet is a project that I just got notes back from, uh, from beta readers, and I'm gonna be starting to outline Project Violet 2 because it's a duology at this point. We'll see if it turns into a trilogy. But I thought that I would outline this and then go ahead and write it for NaNoWriMo in November. So let's go inside. So right away you'll see post-its because I'm post-it crazy. I have more videos on post-its coming, don't worry. <laughs> so these ones I created myself and they are free. So I will link them down below in case you wanna give them a go. And it's just a digital um, printout. These ones are also digital, but these ones were made by Perfectionism Prints, so I'll link them down below. This is for the Getting Things Done system, if you're familiar with that, and I love them. So the post-its I have here are Character Checklist, which is important, so I write down the things that I need for that and then check them off. This is for my digital file, so I usually create a digital file for a new project, and I figure out whether I want to put it in possibly... Um, Google Drive or if I want to keep it like on my physical desktop and whether I'm going to be using pages because I'm a Mac person or not. And then I have chapter checklist, my outline checklist. My inbox is right when I open up my insert. So anything writerly, um, I tend to put right here. And then I end up taking these things that I've written down, sort of like a brain dump, and then I put them wherever they're supposed to go. The next page, we have my folder checklist. So I like to keep a physical folder like this. So this was for Project Violet. So now it will be for Project Violet 1 and 2. And I kind of just keep a list of all the things that I keep physically in here, which I've rewritten out over here. So my checklist for Preptober, outline, character list, character sketches, um, chapter list, scene list, timeline. So the timeline for me is like not only what chapter happens on what day, but also what is the timeline for my entire novel? Does it take place in two weeks, a month, in a year? And then notes for the series, since I am writing a duology right now. I have one of these post-its for Project Violet 1 and then one for 2 so that they're separate. Wow, that's a really loud motorcycle. We're just gonna let them go by. Maybe I'll cut this out. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Sorry, okay. <laughs> so Project Violet 1 gets its own, and then Project Violet 2 gets its own as well. And then I have the same kind of thing right here so I can check them off so that I know that I have a physical copy for them. This just helps me. I tend to use one of these. I've had one of these since college. Um, you can take a piece of paper, put it in here. I don't have any paper that big next to me, but once I do printouts, I just keep this next to my monitor, and it's just like having another monitor with um, information that I need at the time. Then we just have a couple of blank pages here so that I can do kind of my uh, trigger list once um, I get started. This is actually not gonna happen until October. We're at the end of September, so I still have uh, half a week before it starts. Then we go into kind of having a Kanban board included with um, <laughs> my insert. So I like this more because you can take it with you on the go. I'm not the first person to think of this, but I use mine maybe a little bit differently and hopefully it will give you some ideas on how you can use it as a writer and you can you know, adapt it to fit whatever needs you have. So with a Kanban board, you have a backlog, a to-do, 
in progress and then done. And basically the backlog is where you put things that you actually want to work on um, coming up. And then once you are ready to work on that thing, you take it off and you put it in the to-do. Once you actually start it, you move it over into progress. So I basically have Project Violet here and then I have beta notes since I just got those back and I'm going to start working on them October 1st. So I am very, this whole stage is very new to me, so I'm not sure how to really work it out. I'm going to move this because it's bugging me that it's kind of off center, sorry. Okay, so the way I've set this up is Project Violet 1. I have beta reader notes, so beta one and beta two, I'm going to go through and I'm going to read their notes um, for chapter one before I'm, I read their notes for chapter two. And that's sort of how I'm going to do it because I used Google Docs. That seems to be like the writing program that's kind of universal for everyone because some people, like I mentioned, I'm a Mac user, some people are not. Uh, it just works best for everyone. And so I just made copies of that document and sent their own because right now, as far as I know, you can't have beta readers like comment in the same document and not see what they've written. You know what I mean? Uh, you yourself as the owner of the document can hide when a beta reader writes something so you can only read one response at a time, but they can actually see what each other writes. So I just made a copy so they'd have their own. So I kind of have to read both of the chapter one and you know make changes if I feel like I need to and then move on to the second chapter. It's getting dark pretty quick so I hope this is somewhat lit. Anyway moving on so Project Violet 2 I have the exposition and then chapter 1 through 5 that's what I want to work on first and I have some more space here to write other things. So once I start working on that and I'm going to be working on both of these throughout the month of October because I am pretty fast at outlining. I can outline in anywhere from three to five days and be pretty done with it. I also like the idea of coming, you know, halfway through the month and strengthening my outline and adding to it because I like a good seven to 12 page outline, sometimes a little bit longer if I can have that much vision of my novel. It really just depends. Once I get over here into progress and I've done all of these things, I will take the same color of post-it and put another one here and start with like, instead of right here, I'd put chapter four, five, and six, and just do the same thing until it's completely done and I've gone through all my chapters and I can put it in done. The same for this sticky note. Once I go into progress and I'm done with the exposition and I move on to the next thing, I will make a new sticky note and keep it in progress. Down here, I have my beta reader one list and two. So I just worked with three beta readers and I ended up sending this in four sections, my manuscript. And the reason why I did that is because a lot of people have complained and it's not just people who have bad internet like me. <laughs> people who have really good internet and live in the city uh, have complained that Google Docs just doesn't know how to handle a very long um, document. So anything like over 30,000 words, it starts to really slow and lag and just be a hot mess. So I broke mine into four sections because my manuscript was actually over 100,000 words. And I tried to send each section on a Monday and had them finish reading on a Sunday. So that's sort of how I handled that. And I just wanted to make sure that I go through all of those and mark them off. This sticky note down here for betas 2 is actually for Project Violet 1. So once I go through um, reading everything that my beta reader said for the first round, I'm going to take what I like, leave what I don't, and then also add in some beautiful things, <laughs> some beautiful words, change up some stuff. I don't know how many times I used I start, but it was a lot and I need to figure that out. So once I've gone ahead and done that, I'm gonna go with beta readers 2. And I do have a list of beta readers, but I need to make sure that they're not too busy with uh, Preptober, NaNoWriMo, and they're able to read this. Some of my beta readers are not writers at all, so I just have to make sure that they're going to have time to read my novel and give them a date for when that's going to be. And that's basically how I use this page. I just move them to the right as needed. So over here is a different way that you can use them. So I don't actually have a sticky notes with me. What was I thinking? It's okay, I can pull this one off. <laughs> so these are called, I believe, two by twos, but they're also called, what are they called? Um, I think they're like one and seven eighths. They're exactly three of these page flags. So it's really nice. I, of course, set this up four by four so that these would fit in here perfectly. 
but you can make your lines to fit whatever sticky notes you would like. I like the smaller ones because I can fit more in here. This is more for like smaller sections. So A1 is for act one beginning. Once I decide I'm going to work on that, I can move it into to do, then in progress. And then when it's done, I can put it over here. Um, you can also call it exposition if you don't like the three act structure, because I know some people don't, I don't really particularly care for that. Um, or you can just call it, you know, when characters meet, because that's basically what you're doing in the beginning. Make sure that you introduce the characters, everyone meets. Sometimes it's nice to set them up at like a party or some kind of event where everyone will be gathered together. So you can just put that in the done when you're finished. Move on to act two, three, and this can just be notes or something else that you would like. Um, there are several steps in act one, two, and three. So once you're done with the beginning and you put it over here, you can just take it off and then put the next step. I am losing the sun. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so over here, I wanted to show you how you can use this for chapters as well. So this is for Project Violet 2, which I'm gonna be outlining for uh, Preptober and then writing for NaNoWriMo. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, you could also have some space here to write um, just a title if you would like to do that as well. So you can move these over as you're writing. And then once I'm done and I get these finished, I like to do a quick revision so that it's a little cleaner than um, when I go at the end and I'm like, oh my gosh, what were you doing? So <laughs> this is crazy. Because I have actually gone through Preptober, NaNoWriMo, done no revisions and gone back and thought I was insane person. I just, I don't know. I feel like it helps me in the revision process better if I just run it through like the Hemingway app or even if I run it through Grammarly once. So helpful, I promise. <laughs> and if you do it like this, if you keep it in a book like this, um, an insert, you can fit 12 chapters um, to a spread. But of course, if you're an A5, you probably can fit more. And that's sort of how I use my Kanban board on the go. I just, I just like to carry it with me, especially room to room. You can't really carry your whiteboard, especially if it's, you know, attached to your wall, mine is. <laughs> so I like doing something like this. And the rest of this notebook is just for me to probably this first half, the pages I have left, I will just be doing some mind mapping because that helps me out a lot. Luckily, I'm doing a duology. This is my first, I've never done one before. But I already know my main character and some of the other sub characters that are going to be um, showing up in this book as well. So it almost at this point feels like you're just adding on chapters to something you've already written, which is kind of awesome. We'll see how it goes. The second half of this notebook I'm actually going to be using for just kind of writing out things. So sometimes I get to a scene or I get to I don't know, a character, and I'm like, I don't I don't really know how I feel about them, and I need to write it out by hand, and once I do, I kind of just type it up right away, and then I'm good. So now I have some space to do that. In the back here, some more of those post-its. Then I have writing checklist and mystery checklist. So um, mystery is my genre, and there are just some things you have to do in order to be considered a mystery. So I like to put those here to make sure that I have them done. Of course, each genre has their own. So I could just put genre here. Maybe I'll remember to do that when I edit this back uh, before I put this in the description down below. So it just says genre checklist for those of you who are not writing a mystery. Again, next. So these are just all the next steps that I might have to do for whatever project. And then I tend to actually um, write PV1 or PV2 so I know which project um, the sticky note is for. Most of the time I do know, but since I am doing <laughs> two things at once, I don't wanna get confused. Because sometimes when I'm writing, I come up with other ideas and I don't have time to give to that idea. So I tend to write those ideas or thoughts or feelings here and then I move them somewhere else so that I can give time to them later. Talking points, this is mostly for my beta readers so I can ask them questions, thoughts and feelings. I'm always changing uh, what questions I'm asking them as I'm learning more about what I need to know as a writer. Waiting on is basically, again, for like beta readers, if I'm sending them information and I'm waiting for them to get back to me about stuff, that's what goes there. Of course, this is the back of my zippy pouch. 
I love this Hobonichi stencil because I like how small the uh, the numbers are because I have to number my own pages with the Traveler's Company inserts. And of course, this is just a lined one. I just decided to use this one, not that serious. So the best thing I like about this system is I can just use sticky notes and I don't have to redraw these uh, spreads out again because this is lazy planning and lazy writing and I'm not about that life. You can make as many of these as you need for each separate project, even projects you're not really working on right now, but you might find time here and there one day or two days a month. Okay, so now this one's coming out. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right, so that's what I'm gonna be doing for the fourth quarter of the year 2021, in case you're watching this in the future. Uh, how is your writing go? What are your plans for Preptober and NaNoWriMo? Let me know down below. So don't forget to read a book, write a book. Sincerely, Sylvia. Bye.